Hello and welcome back. I know I promised wings at the end of my last video, but I was wrong. We're not ready for wings yet. In order to assemble the fuselage to add the wings, the cockpit has to be finished and ready to go in. So today we're painting the cockpit. I also kind of really messed up when I glued the entire cockpit together without having a clue as to how I was going to paint the thing. As soon as I realized what I had done, I went out and bought some more detail brushes. They're from the Princeton Art and Brush Company, and if I can find a link for them, I'll put it down in the description. They did a really good job and seemed to up my skill level somewhat, which is not saying much. The khaki green color I chose for the flight suit is from memory of actually standing on an Air Force runway watching the different crew members scurry about taking care of their duties, which at the time was getting us from point A to point B. The biggest takeaway I've gotten from painting this cockpit so far is order of operation is important. There are a lot of small details deep in the cockpit that require a really fine touch and painting those would have been a lot easier if I didn't have to worry so much about messing up their surrounding details. As you can see by looking at the top of that console there, getting white paint to cover this primer and it not look like somebody laid a wool blanket on it is an ongoing challenge. Airbrushing would have been ideal for this if I had thought of it before I glued the whole thing together. If anybody has any thoughts on how I can do a better job with a brush, please leave them in the comments. I chose most of the colors in the cockpit from online images of an A-10 pilot in a cockpit. And I'll show you a comparison a little later on in the video. I think you'll see what I'm talking about. For the helmet, I mixed up a slightly glossy black, even though the instructions called for flat. My justification for this is that over time, as objects, even if they started out painted flat color, as they get handled, they become somewhat polished. So I thought that would be more accurate. These are the kind of details that those new detail brushes came in really handy for, and I like the results, especially on the harness. One of the skills I'm practicing is mixing paint colors. This is why I'm using these inexpensive craft paints just to learn on, and I'll show you a good example. Originally, I had planned to paint the pilot's hand a skin tone and set out to mix up some paint for that. As you'll see, that process went completely off the rails pretty quick. Towards the end there, I had enough paint to cover the entire model twice over before I finally gave up and painted them as gloves, which in actuality is more accurate. I thought I had gotten close to something that looked like skin tone, but it just didn't feel right. I've since done a little research and found a nice short little video on mixing skin tones with acrylic paint, and I'll put that link in the description. If you've made it this far through the video, hopefully you think I'm doing something right, and, and if you do, i really appreciate it if you'd hit that like button. It helps YouTube know who to share my content with.
I have invested in some more expensive paints. Well, not super expensive. There was a set of 12 airbrush colors by Medine, M-E-E-D-E-N, and I'm going to try those out before I tell you much more about them. So we'll come back to those in another video. Moving on, I did the injection seat handles next, and I think this was the only straight out of the bottle color I used on this whole project so far. There we are, that's my reference material. I just simply did a Google search for an A10 cockpit and scrolled through the images until I came across this one, printed it out, and I've kept it on my desk while doing this. And I think I'm matching up pretty good so far. For the rails and the back end of the ejection seat, while it's not exactly white, I did discover that mixing a little gloss paint and flat paint seems to make it go on the primer a lot smoother. Unfortunately, I ended up finishing the cockpit up off screen because I forgot to turn the camera on. Note to self, never turn it off. Yeah, up close, this little guy's kind of crunchy, which goes back to one of my previous tips. If you video what you're doing, that way when you go back you can critique yourself afterwards and maybe find things that need to be fixed, which I did. So I wanted to knock out these last few details so I could get on with installing the cockpit in the fuselage. But wait, can anybody see where I'm screwing up right here? Yep, I had to go back and clean all the overspray off the fuselage where it was laying right in the line of fire. Note to self, pay attention to what you're doing or you'll be doing it again. For these little pieces, and since I was spraying acrylic, I didn't want to set up the whole spray booth, so I grabbed a piece of paper, knocked it out right there on my workbench. I think that's fine for small amount of paint, but next time I'm going to grab a bigger piece of paper and mind where I put things. Also, just for quality, airbrush is the way to go, and I want to do more of it even on the small bits and pieces, so I'll be working on that setup. I've got some ideas on making the airbrush a permanent station on my workbench so that I can just grab it up anytime I need it. While the kit said it was copyright 2021, I believe the molds are somewhat older, especially on some of these smaller details that were two-sided, the, the mold lines and there was a bit of flashing that had to be cleaned up on all of them which is indicative of an older mold that's starting to show some wear and tear.
After the mess with the overspray on the fuselage, I thought it best to try to brush paint the front landing gear. But this was a horrible idea, so we're going back to break out the airbrush again. This time, it came out a lot cleaner. Well, there you have it. I think we're at a good place to stop for now. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of the video. If you've not already done so, please consider hitting the subscribe button. It's just right there. Also, a couple of uh, playlists I think you might be interested in. So thank you again and hobby on.